What makes our universe tick? Why does it exist? Why does it work in such a mystical way, yet can be explained by well-defined laws of physics? Well, most of it can be explained. For years, astronomers have tried to wrap their heads around the sheer enormity and the variety of our universe, but to no avail. They know for certain how more than half of it does exist and why it's here. Welcome to Fact Nominal, and today we're looking at crazy, mystical and outrageous theories about our universe that shouldn't exist. Since the Big Bang Theory has been established as the most plausible theory of the origin of the universe, the question of what existed before the universe has been the biggest mystery in astronomy. Now, many famed scientists have dedicated their whole lives in search of the answer to this mystery, but none of these theories meet the standards of the brain world theory. A theory that's actually so crazy and so outlandish that it might just be true. But as this exotic theory offers chaos stored inside the bottle of order and bids potentially elegant solutions to how all of this came to be, it is equally near impossible to prove. The surprise for us was that in the mid-1990s, we found that strings are not the only ingredient in string theory. Strings are one-dimensional entities. They only have length. But we found from our mathematics that the theory also embraced objects that had two dimensions like membranes. In fact, these could be giant membranes. And it didn't stop there. We found that there could be three-dimensional entities, a three-dimensional version of a membrane that we call a three-brain. Brain, B-R-A-N-E, being the operative word that we now use to refer to all of the ingredients in string theory beyond the strings themselves. There can be four brains, five brains, six brains, all the way up to nine brains. To put it as simply as possible, the brain world theory borrows the idea of a multidimensional object from string theory, only that their object is a membrane, or brain, for short. According to Lisa Randall and Raman Sundry, who came up with this idea, the brain is a living organism located inside a hyperdimensional space called the bulk, or hyperspace. According to this theory, multiple universes coexist at microscopic distances from each other, but this distance cannot be measured in three conventional dimensions – length, breadth and height. Instead, these universes overlap in dimensions known to us, and are separated by a fourth spatial dimension that we haven't yet discovered. Austrian mining engineer Hans Horbiger and astronomer Philipp Fouth theorized in 1913 that the entire universe came to exist out of ice. The theory has very little to do with science and sounds more like a myth, but became part of discussions in mainstream science thanks to the Third Reich's promotion of the work during the 1930s. You see, the Third Reich wanted to rework modern science as they found it different from their beliefs. Their religious bias was the reason that for a while, a section of humanity actually believed that ice was the first thing to come into existence in the universe. A few centuries ago, Isaac Newton dropped the mic to show gravity is a thing and explain to us why we don't fall off the round Earth and why planets rotate around the Sun. But over the years, as astronomers discovered more and more of the universe, they're finding it harder to put gravity down as we know it. The math about the amount of matter present in large galaxies in comparison to the observed effects just doesn't really check out. Simply put, galaxies don't have enough matter to prevent them from flying apart according to standard Newtonian mechanics. So the scientists propose the presence of dark matter, an invisible, undetected mass that helps to kind of bulk up the universe so that the two sides of the universe's balance sheet, that's gravity and matter, match each other. Understanding the gravity of the situation here, they haven't found a shred of evidence in support of the dark matter particle's existence. Now this is heavy stuff. Sorry. But this crisis hasn't brought the astronomers down yet. 
in 1983, Israeli scientist Mordechai Milgram tried to give Newton's theory of gravity a new spin by proposing modified Newtonian dynamics, or MOND, which suggests that gravity at lower accelerations is stronger than Newton's model implies, and that the internal motions of objects are determined not only by the object itself, but also by the external field effect. It was a bold claim, but recent evidence of an external field has been detected in 153 disk galaxies. The weight of this new information has pressured peer astronomers to give this theory a considerable evaluation. And I think that's all the gravity puns I could land. <laughs>For a long time, scientists have wondered if the universe is made of only three dimensions, or if there are more dimensions that we aren't capable of experiencing, or perhaps we haven't discovered them yet. So when Einstein came up with the general theory of relativity, he proposed the concept of space-time, where space was the collective term for three dimensions that we're aware of, and suggested time as the fourth dimension that only moves in one direction unlike the other three dimensions. But that definition also cast a shadow on the idea of considering time as a dimension. Unlike the spatial dimensions that can be traversed both back and forth, time is an ever forward moving constant. So can it be truly considered a dimension? While the world of science argues over the individual identities of each dimension, especially time, Stefano Liberati of the International School of Advanced Studies and Luca Massioni of Ludwig Maximilian University propose that space-time isn't just an abstract frame of reference containing physical objects like stars and galaxies, but a physical substance itself. Their theory visualizes space-time not as a collection of four different dimensions, but as a superfluid of zero viscosity. In common speech, they're saying that space-time is a smoothie of what Doctor Who would call a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff, which is very much like a huge sphere of water. Like water, space-time is also made up of countless molecules, but on a deeper level of reality than our instruments can reach. Superfluids have an odd property that they can't be made to rotate comprehensively, unlike water. The scientists theorized that this superfluid breaks into tiny vortices that become the seeds from which the galaxies arise. The Big Bang is considered the most plausible theory about the origins of the universe, but you know we're still trying to figure out how this is all going to come to an end. Now, in our older videos, we've discussed this topic in some detail. We've talked about the Big Freeze, the Big Rip, the Big Crunch, and the Big Bounce theories, which describe how the universe would either freeze to a halt, rip itself apart by sort of carrying on expanding, or perhaps a contract to nothing when the engines of dark energy will stop firing, and who knows, the universe may reboot from nothing again. But all of these theories presume that our universe is the only existing universe. What if there are multiple universes? Could they affect the life cycles of each other? Cosmologists Neil Turok and Paul Steinhardt believe that if the brain world theory is true, and the hyperspace universe perhaps has more universes like ours, the remains of two dead universes are bound to collide with each other and create an entirely new universe. They call this the ekpyrotic theory, but physicist Michio Kaku has more evocatively dubbed it the Big Splat. With virtual reality and augmented reality changing how we see the world around us, a lot of people are wondering, while we're controlling these digital creations, what if someone is controlling us? Like we're characters in a massive game, similar to The Sims 4. Perhaps our lives aren't truly three-dimensional, and we could be living inside a two-dimensional hologram. In Illinois, a group of scientists at Fermilab is trying to figure out the reality of our reality. 
The experiment involves aiming for powerful laser beams arranged in an L-shaped configuration at detectors called holometers to find variations in the brightness of the laser beams. Now, if they do find it, it potentially could be due to some sort of noise or interference. Potentially, that could mean that the universe around us has limitations in terms of the information that it can store, just like a hard drive. Ergo, our universe may be just a dream within a dream. Author, scholar and psychiatrist Emanuel Velikovsky came up with a harrowing theory about our solar system in his 1950 bestseller, Worlds in Collision. Doesn't sound very good, does it? According to him, not all planets in our solar system were formed millions of years ago, but one in particular was a fairly recent addition. And no, we're not talking about Pluto. You know, that thing is not even a planet, so stop trying to make it a planet! It's not a planet. He asserted that around 3,500 years ago, a large body slammed into Jupiter and then ejected Venus in the form of a comet. Venus then sped around the solar system and with a little bit of gravitational sling by Earth in the process, it found its orbit and later morphed into a planet. Also, this comet-turned-planet caused a biblical level of catastrophes in the process. Not only is this ridiculous theory against Newton's law of motion, but Venus shares nothing with Jupiter when it comes to its composition, so it could not be the baby of the concerned gas giant. For centuries, most of humanity has known that our Earth is a rocky planet made of various layers of rock with a ball of molten iron at the centre. But there are a few people who, for a couple of hundred years, have been trying to convince the rest of the world otherwise. They believe that the Earth is actually hollow, with a secret civilization and an ecosystem living there all hidden from our eyes. The idea of a hollow Earth may sound ridiculous, but the theory was once taken seriously by scientists and politicians, and even today it still has a few die-hard adherents. An American physician named Cyrus Teed is responsible for creating a following called Corshanity in Florida to convince the world of his geologic discovery that the Earth is an inverted sphere. Now, while Cyrus was known to be an eccentric and an ardent believer of pseudoscience, he wasn't the one to come up with the idea of a hollow Earth. Surprisingly, that miscredit goes to one of history's greatest scientific minds, Edmund Halley. Halley is known mostly today for the famous comet named after him and for discovering the unpredictability of Earth's magnetic field. Halley also theorised that the shifts in the magnetic field must be the effect of the Earth being hollow. But he didn't stop there and proclaimed that an entire subterranean ecosystem must be thriving underneath the surface of the Earth. As a result, centuries later, we have a movie about a German leader riding a T-Rex and living deep within the Earth's surface. Oh, Edmund. Just like scientists who often wonder how the universe will come to an end, theories have also been proposed as to what will happen to our planet in its end times. The simplest and most plausible farewell to our planet is quite sad as the Sun will reach the next phase of its age and become a red giant. It will simply swallow our planet whole and there will not be a single trace of it left in existence. But Nancy Leader, a lady from Wisconsin, believes that our planet is going to end much sooner because of certain extraterrestrials who chose her to warn us about our imminent doom. Now, she claims that a rogue planet, simply known as Planet X, Nice, is a nemesis of Earth and it's hurtling through the galaxy to find our little blue home. And it's either going to crash into it or pass so closely that it's going to tear the Earth apart with its magnetic pull. Now, as you may expect of a ridiculous theory like this one, it's our beloved internet that's given it enough hype for us to include it in this video. Nice one, Nancy. 
In 2013, a paper by physicists Razier Pour-Hassan, Nyayesh Afshordi, and Robert B. Mann expanded the idea of the brain world theory by proposing that our universe is a hologram laid out on a 3D brain. And they say that this 3D brain came to be because of the collapse of a 4D black hole in the hyperspace universe. Now, this is pretty much similar to how stars go supernova to form black holes. But in this 4D version, a black hole must have gone supernova, and a white hole should have been created. According to these physicists, this white hole was the Big Bang that rapidly created our universe and set off its expansion. Do you know any theories about the universe crazier than these? Tell us in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching Fact Nominal.